you want. Anyway, that's why that's up. Your images are and names are always perfectly anonymous. And we'll begin by relaxing. Sunday's a good day to let go. It's always good to start with a nice deep breath. And the thought or the prayer that something wonderful is coming, uh, an insight, a revelation, a solution, something wonderful is coming. And you don't even have to know what it is, and maybe it's better that we don't. Oftentimes we constrain the universe. In religious language, that's called limit not the Holy One of Israel, but there's a lot of ways to say it. If you're on your back already, wiggle your legs and your arms out, get any residual tension out of your system. There's no rush, there's no agenda, there's no hurry to get to the better thing. This is the better thing. Let go of cares and worries, projects and plans, schemes and designs. Let them temporarily resolve to the background. Let right here, right now, resolve to the foreground. Why are we doing everything that we're doing, all these things, so that we could enjoy the present moment all the more? Begin to follow your breath into your body. As we follow our breath, it goes more deeply into our body. And we can probably get the breathing down to the belly button now. We can make a meditation of paying attention to the rise and the fall of our navel stem. That will also be diaphragmatic breathing, turning on our rest and relaxation response. We're looking for more like that today.
Good. Now we're down into a deeper level, what we're feeling. Yogis call that pranamaya kosha. It's the feeling layer of our being. And so now we can access, observe, breathe into that. This is the doorway deeper in the portal of feelings. Most people bounce off of that. We can go through it. Breathe what you feel, feel what you breathe, allow it, observe it, don't resist. Okay, let, uh, let's say the great prayer of acceptance. I accept exactly who I am, where I am, and exactly what I'm feeling right here, right now. That very bold and brave prayer. Doesn't mean we're going to be here forever. In fact, it gives us the greatest likelihood of uplift, but just accepting right here, such as it is, Good, then the biggest, deepest inhale of your whole life so far. Big inhale, fill up the whole vessel. Exhale, release it all, empty out. We are calm and empty souls. Of course, when you're empty, you can fill up with what you like, wiggle your fingers and toes, circulate, extra super feel God through yourself. We are God's nerve endings, so to speak. God's hands. Good, and then we can take those hands up to the ceiling, lace them up, stretch mildly with arms up over your head. Sunday, everything today is Middle ground, nothing needs to be extreme. That was yesterday's practice. Just kind of writhe around a little bit, get your Sunday happy going on. Good, draw your knees in for some knee hugging and back rolling. I note the time is 11, 11. I, my eyes seem to notice that time a lot. It means we're all one, of course. Okay, friends, let's roll up and uh, let's see where this adventure takes us. Welcome. Welcome to Sunday Sacred Self-Care Yoga. It's one of my very favorite experiences of the week. I hope it is yours too, because the purpose behind it is to create this greater conscious contact with God, love, source, spirit, and it's definitely a practice. It definitely has that intention. It's good to remember that um, we're gathered together in a group of people, even though you're in your house and I'm in my house, two or more are gathered and that increases the attraction power of spirit. And it's a beautiful spiritual reality principle. And close your eyes for a moment and feel the presence of a gathering, a group of souls of like mind. with a combined intention of accessing more source, more spirit, more love, more truth, more healing. And trust that it's on the way.
every movement that we do as innocuous or as uh, random as the movements may seem or may not, they are all prayers. They're physical movements designed to facilitate this channeling of energy. So we'll bring our hands into the heart, Anjali Mudra. And I would invite you to pray or to ask or intend or to visualize for the thing most wanted or needed in your life right now. Add faith, add trust, add optimism. Add humility and a willingness for it to come in some way other than what we think, because oftentimes we see such a small set of possibilities. Good, hit send, the universe receives. It's on the way. Okay, let's do some joint juice, shoulders. Now you might ask, or you might say, haven't we done this before? And as is the case with any ritual, of course it's done before and it'll be done in the future because these are the movements that cultivate, facilitate this internal opening. A lot of what we're doing is breaking up congestion and creating circulation other way. Almost all disease of all kinds is caused by some sort of congestion, lack of movement or circulation in our minds, bodies, emotions. Six, seven, eight. Good job. We'll get our angels in training wings going. Arms up. Arms out. We can begin not to think so much. You cannot, by taking thought, add one cubit to your measure. Easy does it. Poof. A lot of the practice can be done with eyes closed if you want. It makes it more visceral than visual. Your choice. One more poof. Arms forward, palms up. With your palms up, drop your chin, please. Close your eyes and feel receptive and open as if you're an open container that's easy to pour wisdom, love, light in. Good. Open your eyes, pull your hands back, scrape your side a little. Come around to the front, pull in and make a little brush on your side. Easy middle of the road movements designed for everybody. Now this time when we pull in, we'll Pause with our paws at our side. Now, curiously, wrap your thumb in your fist, drop your chin, soft fist, drop your chin. And ujjayi breathing, that soft, whispery seashell sound breath made at the back of your throat. Chin dropped, eyes closed. Nothing to figure out. Good, now push your arms forward, eyes open, go out to the side, internal rotation to go back and push forward. Nice rhythmical movements, rhythm and circulation closely correlate. When we can circulate our blood, our breath, our lymph, our love, we heal. Good. Now we'll lace our hands down here. We're going to chant Om because that breaks up congestion as well. Big inhale. 
So if you'll excuse me for maybe 45 seconds, uh, the weed whackers are on next door. So I'm going to go rescue my cat and close the door. I invite you to close your eyes, pray and meditate. I'll see you in somewhere between 30 seconds to one minute. You were kind and accommodating souls for allowing me to do that. It was hard to rescue my kitten and get all that done, but I kept breathing. Everything worked out great. Okay, friends, so lace your hands, thumbs up, and smoothly draw your thumbs down the widest part of your neck. These are known as your sternocleidomastoids. And not only is it soothing and calming, but it's said to bring a relaxation to the throat, speech, communication, telling the truth, speaking boldly. Here comes the beast bitten now. Seven, and there he goes. All right, thumbs underneath your jaw, relax your face down into your hands. <clears throat> Massage lovingly underneath your jawbone. You may notice the momentum of thinking just generally slowing down. Thoughts don't have so much stickiness. They can just float by. Good. All right. I don't think I've done this for at least a week, so this is why I like Sunday, because I have the time to take my right fingers back left corner of my head and tilt my head to the right. So you can tilt your heads to the right. As your head tilts, your chin can drop, shoulders very heavy, mind very light. Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha. Yoga, bliss, is the calming of the agitation of our minds. It's curious when we add time to a pose, we actually go time less. We take off the vice of time and 
there are these beautiful moments, increments of no time. There's great healing in those gaps. Good, and we'll draw our head back up, click. Left fingers back right corner. Draw, tilt, tilt, drop. Shoulders heavy. And I'd like to remind on this one to soften around the mouth. It's a very common place, mouth and jaw and lips to hold tension, expression, impression. We can just let go of the mask. And full permission to feel whatever your body is vibrating at. Lovely. And we come back up. And on Sunday, I advocate for four slow neck rolls. One. Two, three, four, other way. So simple, so easy. Three, four, good. 20 seconds, ujjayi breathing, smooth whispery sound at the back of our throats. Easier when there's allergies in the air. We're going inside, enter into the closet, shut the door. All of the answers are within. It would be worthwhile to be able to get in there, wouldn't it? We might find a solution to a problem that we've been struggling with for weeks or months or even years. Very good, all right. Now, important to work on our forearms because great mental tension can conceivably be held in these forearm things. So we'll work on it from several angles. Lean into your palms. And this is where this, the yin really kicks in. There's no rush. You don't have to push too hard. You don't have to overdo it. You don't need to underdo it. You could just do it. We can also relax the back of our neck by dropping our chin. We can relax our mind and nervous system by closing our eyes. And we can deepen the presence by relaxing the breath, deepening it. If you suddenly become blissful or joyful for no apparent reason, that means you're accessing your true nature. Sat, chit, ananda. You might be attacked by a wild animal while you're doing this and you would still be completely calm and peaceful, even though you're being mauled by a mountain puma.
now the yin is kicking in, the patience, maybe you want out, maybe you want to do something else. So this is where we cultivate a little bit of that wonderful spiritual quality called discipline. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. So discipline. All right, that feels about right to me. Now my hands are permanently bent in this situation. We'll fix that. We'll take our arms way behind our back. We'll bring them up to our heart. We'll pack the hands back into the armpits. <clears throat> I consider this an extremely dynamic, important position. Elbows inside your knees. And all of us are gonna be different, whether we can squeeze our knees all the way together and our elbows, or whether we can't come close. Where we compare to somebody else is, I think we understand is fully irrelevant. What is relevant is compare yourself not to other people, but we can compare ourselves to where we were yesterday. That's a valid comparison. Drop your chin. Find just the right interesting progressive amount of sensation. In this way, we learn to build the quality of subtlety. We don't need a sledgehammer. We can feel small movements on the dial. Good. Then we might draw our feet together just because it's symmetrical. I feel this. I've been doing this a long time. And yes, we feel a little of that impression. So we work it out with these. This keeps us handy other way. I personally have grown. I've fallen deeply in love. I have a deep romance with these movements. Everybody should fall in love with something, right? Then I'm gonna cup my hands at my heart. I'm gonna drop my chin. Now I'm gonna kind of feel thoughts like, I'm a calm and peaceful soul. I'm a confident and brave soul. I'm an abundant and prosperous soul. I am a mirthful and bemused soul. And by all means, Make your affirmations, let them soak deeply into your psyche. If we don't make our own affirmations, the universe will make them for us. And then we live somebody else's. I recommend your own. Good. Now, one of the names of Sunday class is self-care. So self-care involves reflexology, some acupressure. I'm massaging the heart lung center of the bottom of my feet. This helps to disperse resentments, anger, burned up at somebody. Maybe we're angry at ourselves for some reason. Sometimes that's the deepest layer of anger to let go is self-reproach, self-recrimination. That's just anger pointed inward. Of course, we can spray it outward on a bunch of other people, but we don't need to repress anger. We can alchemicalize it into something higher. This is a good way to do it. An interesting way to do it. Good. Now hold steady pressure, middle, center, bottom of feet. Close your eyes. Feel the heart, lung center. If there is any anger or resentment or bitterness, that's okay, we're humans. We've all been hurt and wounded and damaged in some way. And we can all forgive it, transmute it, heal it. Good. All right, and after that heavy process, we'll have a little fun. 
we'll just wiggle our, we'll jiggle our undercarriage a little bit. Yeehaw. Loosen up my thigh bones and my hip bones because apparently they're connected. Good left elbow inside your left knee. See how I'm massaging this point. Then I'm going to lean over on my left hip and try to push my right knee all the way down. Going to drop my chin, close my eyes, forget all my problems and remember, forget your problems, remember your truths. Good. Now I'm going to take my right elbow and just kind of massage in there a little bit. It's a very sensitive point. Back when I did a lot of body work on people, massaging the inner knee, people would really tense up until they gulped and kind of relaxed into the live wire of this point. Good. Then I'm going to push this knee down. Same pressure point. Good, my friends. Now, another important pose, egg pose. So knees together. Now I understand based on your body type, just bringing your knees into here might be a lot. If you can get them all the way in together, that's your body shape. Then pull your heels all the way in and then just rewrap a couple times. It's quite possible to wrap much more strongly, but this is not the I'm the most flexible person in class class. This is this is what my body does. This actually is a great beauty of Zoom yoga is that in the privacy of your own living room, you can assume the shapes that work for you. My job, my job is to give you a lot of options and to coax you verbally into finding the shape, the hieroglyph that works for you. Relax your shoulders, float your head, drop your chin, breathe your breaths. Sunday's a good day to fast from intensive activity. I'm gonna fast, personally, I'm fasting on food today and it'll be interesting the various states that come up Right after class, I'll want to go to McDonald's and get 17 Happy Meals, but that would not make me happy. So I'll fight through the urges and temptations and then it'll go away and then it'll come back. And just watch it all. Grist for the mill. Good. Now we'll move a little bit. We'll just grab our big toes and lift your feet if you can. If you can't, if you're like here and just grabbing your big toes is sufficient, that's okay. The only person judging you in this class today would be yourself. And if you are, you could just temper and relax that little stretch of your left leg, little stretch of your right. This is not the ballerina class where all the kids are straightening their legs all the way. That's that's one tenth of one millionth of percent of humanity. But just to move it a little bit and groove it a little bit. Maybe both at the same time. Now I'm actually going to actively bend my knees and I call this clicking the car seat forward. You ever gotten in a car after somebody six foot eight has been driving it and it's like, whoa, you have to click the seat way forward and slide it in. And then you pull the steering wheel in. I remember the days when steering wheels were in one position. Do you remember those days? Am I dating myself? I'm just going to balance for a moment, lengthen the spine not strain, just find my balance point. We all have a balance point. Good kids. Now from here, 
I'm going to apologize in advance for this next one because you may not like it, but occasionally in life, there's things we don't like. Have you noticed? Left ankle over my right knee, I'm sorry. Left ankle over my right ankle. See that? I'll even say it again, doink. Now, this is so sensitive on some humans that they have to actually lean back. There's so much tension and anxiety and gripping in the ankles and shins that they actually lean back. I did when I first started doing this, my teacher forced me to do this. I'm a different kind of teacher. I'm super cool. And over time with geologic progression, I began to learn to relax my feet and my shins and my calves and my skin and my toenails and my foot bones. Now my shape is going to be different than yours. You might be leaning back. Little kids can lean all the way down and put their feet behind their head. Close your eyes and whatever you're feeling, breathe it, it's okay. Let the feet soften as we come forward. And then you can pause in a particular position. And here's an interesting idea. Experience your experience. Breath is always the barometer of the quality of a position. Short, choppy breathing is closing our artery to God. Smooth, deeper breathing, opening our channel to God. Now from your fingertips, if you can, I'm gonna elongate my spine. That's an inhale. The cat on my t-shirt gets longer. I'm going to exhale and deepen into my experience of living a little more. It's easy to get, it's easy to forget that we're eternal spiritual beings having a mortal, mortal life. And so it's incredibly healing to remember whatever we're going through. It's a phase, this too shall pass. Maybe we're in the first grade. Think what second grade and third grade is gonna be like. Wonderful. Relax your neck, back and shoulders. In poses like this, we take the accumulation of the past, any trauma, any PTSD, any accumulated anxiety, it's allowed to disperse. I'm not saying you have that, but I'm not saying that you don't. Most humans do, honestly, if they're honest with themselves. Good, now wiggle your fingers and toes, soften those feeties. Now, when we come up, I want you to realize that you have released months of tension and anxiety. So let's sing and celebrate with an ohm. Big inhale. Om. It says in the scripture that song, singing is the natural expression of a joyful soul. A lot of people have forgotten how to sing. I'm one of them, but I'm remembering. Good, now we're gonna put um, righty over lefty. The first experience of this could be, ah. So you could even lean back and just intend to soften your feet, shins, calves, skin, toenails. Good to get up here begins to apply pressure forward. And as we come forward, let's keep the, you know how a pressure cooker, the little needle moves in very slow increments. That's wise. Shoulders relaxed. Breathing engaged. 
sensitivity on comparison to others off comparison to your own self on we might spend an hour on 10 movements today that's okay now from my fingertips i'm going to long my spine and extend my arms i'm going to look forward at my extraordinarily brilliant and bright future wow greg that's a bold claim you could claim yours too exhale come on down one person claiming their truth makes it easier for others to do the same. Maybe you're going to sweep your head around a little bit. Maybe we've all been holding on a little too tight. Silence. This is a confronting pose for me. It confronts me. It pushes my face into the boundary between where I'm comfortable and where I'm uncomfortable. And that's called being human. We can use that interface intelligently to expand. Good friends, come on up. Oh, wow. That's a lot of feeling. Good. Now, left foot forward. Place to cross your right ankle over your left knee. Easier. Left shin folds under. Optional. And let's soothe this point a little bit, shall we? Bring some happy and some movement in there. Sure, I'm glad I've been doing this on my ankle for many decades now, because as we get a little more, as a few more pages fly off the calendar, it's the condition of our feet that determine whether we have balance and can move freely in the world. And I personally would like to be 90 or 100 years old, should that be my karma, and move friskily. Snap your toes, one, two, ouch. You heard that one. Good. Slap your foot. Good. Now I feel like twisting and shouting with my friends I'm going to take this left hand, put it on my right knee, watch the crown of my head as my spine floats up a little taller, and take happy yin twist to the right. Now, if we were little kids, our right arm would go behind our back, easily grab our right foot, but that's not the purpose of this class. The purpose is to close the eyes, connect soul and spirit, Atman with Brahman, so to speak. And experience the bliss that ensues. So start now. If you're in a hot air balloon hovering 10 feet off the ground, start throwing out the ballast of fear and worry and comparison and jealousy and anxiety and you will float up. Especially when you're doing it with your friends. I get high with a little help from my friends. Higher in consciousness that is. Okay, now we're going to counterpose really intelligently, and I'm only going to do it on this side, but that's cool. I'm somewhat asymmetrical. I'm going to fold my right shin under. Nice and easy. I could be way over on my left, but I'm going to put my paws behind me, and I'm going to champagne my bottom and caviar my rear. Lift up, head back. This is so that more ecstasy fits in our soul, in our spine. And come on down. Good job. Now, happily, our right leg will extend out. 
with greater happiness, the left ankle will cross over. Now the right shin coming in, that's like an option on your brand new Tesla. You're gonna get the uh, leather seats or the vegan seats. One, two, three, four, five. This is self-care at its best. Other way. Maybe you weren't given the owner's manual for your body when you were a kid. Maybe your parents didn't have it. They didn't know it was in the, the love compartment. So this is the owner's manual. Six, seven, eight. I like the love compartment thing. One, two, three, four. So I teach yoga for a living and I can get one toe to crack on each side. Should I judge myself? No. All right. Now, from here, we're going to take our arms out. We're going to give ourselves a hug with our right elbow under. And then we're going to kind of love our shoulders a little bit. Then our arms can fold up if they will. And we're just going to go up and down and left and right with our elbows to dig out trauma, fear, worry, dread, impending doom we're going to turn impending doom into impending okay and impending okay turns into impending good i'm going to take my elbows around in a circle there's a lot of tension that builds up in our neck back and shoulders but not anymore not in this sunday class come to this class once a week Make sure to invite your friends, because if you have a friend come, it amplifies the joy. Good. Now elbows all the way to the right, face to the left, drop your chin, close your eyes, be unusually happy for no reason. Advertisers hate that because then they can't sell you anything. Good, now from here, that twist, right hand, left knee, left arm behind me, watch my head, my spine gets longer, turn left, and literally, literally like 40 seconds, experiencing the rotation of your spine to the left, shoulders relax, chin level, eyes closed, countenance calm, Disposition, peaceful, mood, good. Inhale here, friends. Exhale here. Good job. All right, now we'll bring our elbows up. We'll grab them up here and we're going to re reframe at least half of my career now as coaching and talking and listening and coming up with solutions and insights. Life coaching, it's called. So this is reframing, seeing things in a new way. Switch the cross of your elbows. Good, and bring the elbows down. Now a different pressure point, very important inside of our body. Thumbnails underneath the big toe knuckle. And if you dig your thumbnail in there, you'll find it to be spicy, stimulating, even provocative. Provo it provokes, it evokes feelings. Good, now push your thumbnail into Kshipra. That's the Ayurvedic point of vision. So close your eyes and connect your third eye on your forehead to these two pressure points. That makes a perfect triangle. Close your eyes and visualize a triangle, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, 
Holy Ghost, spirit, soul, and that which connects. We're always that triangle. Sometimes we feel we forget and we're just the mortal part. Connect to all of it. Good. Now we'll chant Om, feeling this feeling. Aum. That deep vibration breaks up congestion of painful patterns of perception, stinking thinking. Opinions we've held since the third grade. Good, here's an interesting prayer. Hands to our heart, drop our chins. This is called the set aside prayer. God, love, source, being, universe, love. I set aside everything that I think that I know, which is obviously a lot. And I'm gonna set it aside that I might actually learn something today. Very good. Now we'll do a yin restorative pose. I think we've earned it after this long. So what I'm going to do, it's going to be, this is a variation of yogis laying on a bed of nails. Let's not lay on a bed of nails. I don't think it needs to be that extreme. What I think it could be is a bed of blocks. And I could simply have a head block, a heart block. So this, this will release my head block. This will release my heart block. Now I know you guys have lots of blankets and bolsters and pillows and pets and accoutrement. So I'm going to, this is all it's gonna be. I'm gonna have something underneath my knees. When I lay back, I, in a general sense, I wanna find my bra strap. Oh, right there. Knees are supported, feet are together. Oh, now this makes me say, oh God, which is a good thing. Oh God, because I got to relax my bones into this shape. And let's do this for two, three, five minutes. Let's not be in a big rush. You ever met somebody that was in a big rush and you wanted to slow them down a little bit? Take your time. Swallow once, circle your jaw around. Now, how high these blocks are is, that's on you. How high my blocks are, that's literally on me. We'll let silence wash over the affair. The brain will roll back and God will bring us downstream easily. Now my bones have gotten pretty settled into this, so I'm just going to turn my head block down one size because I stretch my heart open. I might need to fall in love later today. You never know. This is optional. This is just going to break my thoracic chest open a little more. A lot of guys don't open their hearts unless there's a rib spreader. So I'd like to be one of the more 
vulnerable dudes. Teach my boys how to do it. This out. This in. Breathing down to the belly button from the chest. What a lovely thing to do with your friends. I call this floating on our rafts downstream. Lift up the oars, either or, let the current pick us up and reorient us. And now I'm just gonna stretch my legs out. This is called lounge chair swimming pool pose. I'm going to cross one ankle over the other one, doesn't matter which one. This is, we have uh, one of our homes that we own is down in Bel Air in LA, and we're floating on that pool that looks out over the city, feeling super cool. Everything is always working out for us. God loves us so much that everything is always working out for us. Now, I actually do feel like falling in love today with reality all the more. So I'm going to move my fully optional, moving my head block out of the way and Ouch, that's a little much for yours truly. Ah, ha, ha. arms up, optional, extend arm over, arms over. And this is called Spanish Inquisition Pose. It's kind of strong, but we're strong peeps. And you don't even have to do it. That's how flexible my classes are. Good. Now, biggest, deepest inhale of your whole life centered at your heart. Stretch your sternum all the way up to the ceiling. Exhale, let go of years, decades, lifetimes of constraint, limitation, silly karma. Yeah, 
in the twinkling of an eye, says St. Paul. In the twinkling of an eye. Okay, now I'm just going to lift my head up. My head feels lighter. I think I've been enlightened now. Oh, elbows at my side. Going to come up slow. Oh, holy. Now, let's get this silly stuff out of the way here, this silly stuff. All I'm going to do is I'm going to going to put a bolster underneath my knees. Now we're really going full waterfall here. Maybe something underneath my ankles. Now, instead of my heart being broken, I'm going to heal my heart. I'm going to make a little roll from my neck. You know, a lot of people, they come to class just for the Shavasana, and they say something like, Hey, Greg, you sure flap your jaws a lot. Why don't you be quiet for six minutes and let me float downstream? Okay, I hear you. Relax, kids. I love you. Settle in. I'll see you in six eons of eternity. Bye.
Mm, bonus relaxing minutes, you deserve it. Good friends, that was closer to 10 minutes and stay in the pose. I cordially, wholeheartedly invite you to relax more. And this is from the Sunday Church of Greg, such as it is. If you'd like to invite God, love, source, being, infinite higher organizing principle, whatever your conception of higher power is, if you'd like to invite that in, it's a beautiful time. All we have to do is crack the door of our heart open a little more, our minds, bodies. Always from choice, never from coercion. Doesn't work that way. God's very polite, won't intrude unless we ask. Good. Now, if you said that little prayer with me, you've been infused from on high with super love and light. You might wiggle your fingers and toes and circulate super feel goods through yourself. You are a nerve ending of God. You are a conduit between heaven and earth. You conduit. Good. Nice deep breath back in your mortal spacesuit. You can curl onto your right side whenever you're ready. There's no rush, not on Sunday. You should curl onto your right side, curl up into a little love ball, love all over yourself. We come to God, source, love, spirit as little kids. Good, now keeping our eyes closed to keep the creamy cosmic filling on the inside, we'll sit up together. After having enjoyed a really good experience together, gathered in spirit, in truth, in love, in reverence, in peace. Then we can bring our hands to our heart. And I believe truly, if I go deep into me and you go deep into you, we come to the same field together. Rumi said that. I'll meet you there. Chin drops in humility. All together, the mighty, amazingly wonderful Sunday yogis, we all say. Namaste. Peace. Om Shalom. Peace be with you.